Hi, it's Rachel and I'm here for my monthly floss tube update. I'm going to start with a couple of FFOs. So these are projects that I'd shown in previous videos that I've managed to get framed. So the first one is my Robin. And I framed these myself. Um, I bought the frames online from Frame Express. And this one, I just got a walnut frame. It has a um, kind of decorative effect on it. And then just um, a soft white mat and the smaller mat on the inside is, I think the colour was cocoa. Cocoa or espresso, something like that. But it picks out the colours in the design quite well. So I really liked how it came out. So that was the first one. Then I also framed my geisha and I really love this one. She's in a black frame which has a gold part to it. Um, so you can see the gold there, that's part of the frame. And then the mats I got this is a red mat, the, the larger mat there, but it looked online, it looked more of a dark pink, which I was a little bit disappointed when I opened it because it really did look dark pink and I was trying to pick out the, the colours on her kimono sleeves. Um, that's the bit that I wanted really to bring out, but I think it came out quite well. Once I'd framed her, I was actually really happy with it because I did contemplate reordering another mat in another colour. Um, but you know when you just get something and you want it framed. So I put her in the frame and I love how it came out. That colour actually, that red colour, does feature in the pattern. Her lips and on her shoe. I don't know if you can see her shoe at the bottom is exactly the same colour and the pinks, the darker pinks in a kimono are almost the same, they're definitely the same tone so um, I was really happy with it. It's the first time I've framed anything myself and I laced the back um, so I was quite pleased with that. So they're my FFOs. Then for stitching the first 10 days I was finishing off the geisha um, then the next 10 days I worked on Summer in Bloom, which looks like this from Cross Stitcher magazine. Um, I'm wanting to say it was from August 2009, but I might be making that up. Um, I will try if I remember to put the issue number in the comments, because um, this is just a photocopy from my working copy, so I'll need to find the original which I can see from here but it means getting off and I'm not going to do that. Um, so last time, well last time I showed it was kind of in the middle of the 10 days I was dedicating to this and I'd done the birdhouse, the berries and the first fuchsia. So my progress now is I've done the little bee and the second fuchsia and also started on the rose. So let me see. There we go, that's quite a good view. The little bee or wasp or whatever he's supposed to be. I'm not sure if he's a bee or a wasp because there is another bee on here. But um he was quite intense <laughs> to stitch. There's a lot of back stitching and it was um, it was kind of tricky the counting for where the back stitch went. I wouldn't recommend stitching this on Ada because a lot of that back stitching would be through the middle of the Ada. Um, there's the rows which again lots of back stitching on my and then I've just started the leaves. Did get a new needle minder, the little hummingbird there. 
is a new new needle mines a bit of an impulse buy um, I was buying some grime guards from somebody and they had some needle minders and I really liked that one I'm not really one for collecting hundreds of needle minders I just tend to have a few that I actually need um, although I quite like to make some for myself rather than buy them I think if I I have made a couple which will probably make an appearance at some point um, but yeah I don't go mad with the needle minders so uh, yeah that was the next 10 days and then I did mention working on this Mirabilia which is my lady's garden I don't see or I haven't seen anybody stitching it I don't think maybe because it's a very early one and there's no beads on it I don't know but I really liked the design and I did um, have some concerns about whether I was going to be able to stitch this because it's on 32 count linen which I'd, I'd never worked on 32 count before or on linen and I was concerned about being able to see it properly because the the natural linen that it called for is kind of speckled or mottled um, so I was worried about that and the Krynik blend was giving me a bit of a hard time as well but made a fair bit of progress I think on her the border the border's finished you can't really see it there except for the very top where it's only crossed in one direction I've only got the first leg of the cross done and I kind of did that because that was the, I started at the top and then worked all the way around um, on the sides it was easier to do the full cross but when I began I was like I'll just do the the first leg in case it doesn't meet up and then I've not wasted as much time but then I don't know I just ended up stitching the rest of it in full crosses for whatever reason but luckily it met up. I, I was concerned. I think I was concerned with my counting on, on 32 because I wasn't used to it and I wasn't used to working with the slubs and I was kind of like, is, there a, is that a hole? Am I supposed to stab a hole between those slubs? And I, I find myself trying to count to other areas of the fabric to work out where the hole should be when you, know, when you hit a slub area. But now I've got used to it, I actually really like stitching on linen. And if I can stitch on this with the mottled effect, I think going to a, a solid, um, like a white or cream or ecru or something like that, I think would be easier again. So, yeah. And, oh, she's on a, another frame. This is a frame I got from Amazon. I, it's El Bessie brand, I think. Um, it was only... 10 12 pounds something like that and I'm actually really pleased with it it's not as tight as a, a Q snap but it's it is the side parts for whatever reason are, are really really tight and then this middle part is not as tight but I think that's to do with how I've clipped it on because it has these let me see if I can show them actually I can no, I can't show the bottom ones because it's right around. But it's got these clips on it. Would you see they're in sections? So I think if I um, take the clips off and, and alter the fabric, because you can kind of see from the border, it's pulled tighter in some places. But I was actually really pleased with it for, for the amount of money. I really liked it. And I love, once I've got that border done, I'm really pleased with how this is coming out. Love stitching on her. Um, and my other um, concern with this piece, because oh, I was nervous about the 32 count. I was nervous because it was mottled and I couldn't see the holes properly. I didn't like the permian fabric in a Q-snap because it's like cardboard, but I've got used to the fabric. Um, I can see the holes with reading glasses on. Um, and now it's not an acute snap there's no problem with gathering all the fabric together 
So um, those things are fine. My other concern, I didn't want to change the fabric because of this little urn over here. And I'm so glad I didn't now because the, because this middle part here, which you can't really see, there's a part coming down there that forms this um, kind of middle part. Um, and none of it's stitched. It's just the fabric that makes the stone. So I'm really glad that I didn't change the fabric because I just think it would look odd because those colours go perfectly with the permian fabric. So if you're looking to stitch this, I would definitely recommend sticking with this fabric or finding a, a less cardboardy alternative that is this colour. Um, but yeah, love this. Love the colours. Um, her face... Her face gave me such a hard time. I don't know why. <laughs> it's not It's not difficult to stitch at all, but for whatever reason, I kept picking up the wrong colours. I, I don't know why. But anyway, that was um, the last 10 days of the month that I worked on her. So there was the geisha, first 10 days, summer in bloom, second 10 days, and then the last 10 days of the month, the mirabilia. So now that the geisha is finished for this month, um, and I haven't stitched for the last few days, I will say that. We're on the third today, and we went back to work on Wednesday, and I haven't stitched since then. And I knew I'd be really tired getting back into the routine um, of getting up ridiculously early. Um, and there's just so much information at the beginning of term. Um, you just get information overload and then it's just massively busy. So I knew I'd be tired and not get much done. So I might continue with my Mirabilia for now for the next seven days that are left. Um, or one of the ones I've started and then leave a full 10 days for a new project and I think I think I'm gonna go for this one I wanted to add a kit into my rotation because after doing my kit video I was like I realized how many kits I had and I need to stitch them for well a because I, I want to stitch them that's why I bought them but B some of them they don't fit into the containers anymore. So this one was already out. I've shown it before. It was out and it's in a cue snap. It's all ready to go. Even the needle is in the is threaded with the right colour floss to start in the place where I want to start, which is always the top of the pattern. So I think I'll give that a full 10 days and that'll be my next one. I did pack a one of the Dimensions Petites kits to take to work and it didn't happen. I, I just had so many things to do and our lunch break is quite late in the day and by the time it got to lunchtime I was just too tired to concentrate on counting and yeah I just didn't have the energy for it. But I'm going to try harder next week um, and maybe do a little bit of stitching before work and even if it's only 10 stitches put something in um, we'll see how that goes. Any progress is better than none, right? So, yeah, that's um, my update on those. I did do a little bit of shopping. Yeah, I know, that's really bad after <laughs> after showing all those kits. Um, but I think I said previously, summertime is when I buy things because I'm off work and I'm in to get the post. And it was like that last, that last week of panic buying I guess not panic buying as such but so and so had a sale um so I bought a few bits from there um and yeah because it was the last week of getting so that's probably going to be it for a while anyway uh so I will share those with you I'm just um picking those up so this oh this is an eBay find this is Lavender and Lace, The Spirit of Christmas. And I saw Stephanie from Miss Oso Crafty stitch this one. And it looked gorgeous. Because on the picture, and I know we say this all the time, they don't look that great on the pictures. Well, he looks okay, but the one that Stephanie stitched was just stunning. So 
I want to have a go at that. Um, and I only paid £2.25, I think. I won it in an auction. And it's completely brand new. It's sealed, so that's good. Then I picked up this from so-and-so. It's a Thea Governor kit of magpies on a honeysuckle. And it's been on my wish list for ages and ages and then somebody somebody mentioned in a comment they said um because i said i liked floral and um wildlife and birds and they said oh have you tried the thea governor kits and it kind of reminded me of oh yeah i've got those on my wish list <laughs> so i went and bought one i have a few of theirs on my wish list but some of them are on 36 count fabric and as much as I was hesitant about the 32 count, um, I'm hesitant, more hesitant obviously about 36 count. I don't know. Maybe you guys can tell me if you've bought 36 count and how easy it is to see. I know everybody's different, but I don't know. I just don't want to, they're quite a lot of money those kits and I don't want to spend the money on something and not be able to stitch it. And I know some of them are available in 18 count as well, but if you don't know whether there's fractional stitches in them, 18 count's quite small to be putting a needle through the centre of the fabric. But anyway, that one's the most kinds are on 32 count, so that'll be fine. I can stitch on 32. Then I got these two kits, these are heritage kits. One is called, this one is Quiet Mornings, here, and I, I just love the colours on here. This is not especially the type of thing I'm norm normally drawn to, but it was the colours. really love the colour combination on there. Um, this one is Morning Calm. So there are a couple of others, the same kind of style. I think there's two more. Well, there's two more that's so and so sell. So they've been on my wish list for a while. And then so and so had a sale. Um, I think they were originally 20, 20 something pounds. And they were down to 11 pounds something. So they, they were half price. So I wasn't going to leave them there when they'd been on my wish list. Um, then I bought Petal Fairy which I didn't intend, I didn't intend on, well I didn't intend on buying half the things I have but it happens. This one, I put an order into so and so to get, what was it for? To get something, I don't, I don't remember what it was and um, I'd forgot, oh yeah that's it, I was one thread short on my um, mirabilia that I'm currently stitching so I went to go and buy that and of course you can't buy one thread and get free postage. <coughs> so I had to order a few of other things and I think that's when I got the kits and things in the sale. And then I realised that um, I'd got threads for something else at the same time and I realised I'd forgotten to get one of those so I had to go back literally the next day put another order in for one DMC again and you can't order one DMC so I was like well what else do I want I've bought everything that I wanted from the sale um, I didn't want to spend massive amounts of money and I didn't really want to go and get out more charts and start kitting more things up so the easiest thing was just to buy a pattern so I just went to my wish list and got that. So that's that's how that one um, ended up with me. And then I got these two from artsanddesigns.com. These are Nimu patterns. So I have the coal tit with the furry and there's a little cricket or grasshopper on my head. And then I got the robin one as well. 
So again, these have been on a wish list for a while. Um, I did order another one from so and so in the same style, but it was um, it said it was in stock, but then I got um, an out of stock um, note on my order, so I don't know what happened there. Uh, okay, a few more charts. Um, these I mentioned Michael Powell that I liked his style. I didn't know he had a website of his own where you could just buy things from. So once I discovered that, um, and you could buy just the charts, I didn't know that either. So I think this is something new. It says new on his website for this section. Um, and I really like these, so I bought all four of them. <laughs> I know, that's quite bad, isn't it? But um, I just really like them. So this is this one's celebration cake. Then this one is cupcakes. Aren't they fun though? I just love the colours and the quirky style. I really like them. Then this is strawberry ice. And this one is Vanilla Ice. And they are 4 by 8 inches, so they're not massive. Uses 19 colours with 11 blend colours. Full stitches and back stitch. And it's charted for Anchor DMC and Madeira threads. So that was those. Then I picked up, this was from the So and So sale. This is um, Crosswings Collection Morning Doves. We don't have morning doves in this country, to my knowledge. But I saw Christine from Calico stitching this and I just loved it. It's not it's not something I would look at and I mean I like bird patterns but it's not one I would look at and have to have. But when I saw a stitching I think it was the leaves more than anything they just the colours were stunning so when I saw it and I had looked at it when I saw um, Christine's video, I'd looked for it straight away and couldn't find it and then I don't know how I came across it on the sale pages but I did um, and then just one more chart this was eBay and it's Tree of Life Afghan so it's obviously an Afghan by Permin I just thought it was fun and pretty got a little bunny and birdhouse and little birds and nests I just really liked it and I don't know whether I'd stitch it as an afghan because that would be huge there's like there's about 20 pages in here um, but I think maybe stitch on 32 count instead and make it much smaller I don't know I'd have to work it out How I think it would still be pretty big but we'll see. It was a, uh, it was one of those auctions where there's like twenty seconds left. When you, you know, you open eBay and it's like, do I want it? Do I want it? Quick, make a decision, kind of thing. So, it was. I think it was pound. So what can I say? I picked it up. I think that is everything for today. Um, yeah, it's probably going to slow down a bit with the amount of stitching I can get done because of work but you know work pays for it all so can't really give that up um, yeah I don't think I've got anything else to talk about today so that would be everything I guess alright well thank you for watching um, hope you enjoyed seeing my updates and oh yeah I know what I was going to say um, I've noticed from a lot of people's channels and 
um, when I'm watching their videos, a lot of people post on Instagram, and I've I've started. Um, well, I've opened an Instagram account with the same name as my channel name, Artful Stitchery, um, but I haven't posted anything yet, and I haven't really um, followed anyone because I don't know anybody's um, names. So, if you have an Instagram account where you post pictures of your stitching and you'd like me to follow you then leave your Instagram name in the comments and I'd be happy to do that and equally if you want to follow me I'll try to remember to put that in the comments but it is, it's just art for stitchery so you should be able to find that um, as I say I've not posted anything on it yet I've just created the account and then not really known who to follow so yeah, you can definitely do that. I'd love to follow some people. Or if you know anybody that you follow that you think I'd be interested in, you can see the kind of style that I like. Um, more sort of natural, botanical, wildlife, countryside, birds, animals, anything like that. Um, and fairy. I like fairies as well. Mirabilia. Um, yeah, so... Leave me either yours or recommendations you to follow. That would be gratefully received. Okay, that is it now. So thanks for watching and happy stitching, everyone.